chemical potential of a two-dimensional electron gas and Sommerfeld expansion. For a two-dimensional electron gas, derive an expression for the temperature dependence of the chemical potential. To show that at any finite temperature, the chemical potential deviates somewhat from the Fermi level. Mu of T for a three-dimensional electron gas is given approximately by the Sommerfeld expansion as Fermi energy multiplied with parentheses 1 minus pi squared over 12 kbt over e fermi parentheses squared okay now <clears throat> at a finite temperature we can calculate the number of electrons as integral from 0 to infinity fermi direct distribution f of epsilon density of states t of epsilon d epsilon okay now if we substitute integral from zero to infinity fermi dirac distribution one over one plus e to the epsilon minus chemical potential mu over boltzmann constant times temperature Density of states we have determined in the previous problem, it was ma over pi h bar squared. So we can substitute that here, ma, mass of the electron times area, divided by pi, reduced Planck's constant square, d epsilon. And n, the number density, is total number of electrons divided by a, is the aerial density okay now if we take this a to the uh, left hand side this will become a lowercase n the aerial density and then we have pi h bar squared over m so let's do that n pi h bar squared over m mass of the electron is the integral from 0 to infinity the Fermi Dirac distribution 1 over 1 plus e to the epsilon minus mu over Boltzmann constant times temperature d epsilon now I'm going to call epsilon minus mu over kbt x so that d epsilon will become Boltzmann constant times temperature dx. So with that substitution, if the energy is equal to zero, that means x will be equal to minus mu over kbt and if the energy is infinite then x will be infinite so um, we have the two limits taken care of now uh, if we substitute that into our integral n pi h bar squared over m is equal to so d epsilon is replaced with kbt dx so kbt comes outside integral from minus mu over kbt to infinity 1 over 1 plus e to the x dx now what i'm going to do is call 1 plus e to the x y so that e to the x is y minus 1. So e to the x dx becomes dy therefore dx is dy divided by y minus 1. So this integral becomes with that substitution uh,
and pi h bar squared over m kbt, if we take kbt to the left hand side, is equal to the integral. Now I have to look at the limits when x is equal to uh, minus mu over kbt, what is y? y is 1 plus e to the x, so it is 1 plus e to the minus mu over kbt. And when x is equal to infinite, y is equal to infinite. So the integration limits are changed. 1 plus e to the minus mu over kbt is the lower limit. Infinity is the upper limit. And then we have dy uh, divided by y, y minus 1, right? So we have replaced uh, dx with dy over e to the x, which is dy over y minus 1, and 1 plus e to the x is y. And uh, we're going to play a trick here to uh, calculate this integral n pi h bar square over m kbt is equal to the integral lower limit 1 plus e to the minus mu over kbt upper limit infinity this 1 over y y minus 1 can be written as 1 over y minus 1 minus 1 over y dy so uh, y minus y plus 1 becomes 1 times 1 y y minus 1. So this 1 over y, y times y minus 1 is 1 over y minus 1 minus 1 over y. So this is easy to perform because dy over y minus 1 is negative natural logarithm of y minus 1. So the right hand side becomes natural logarithm of y minus 1 and the second term is also natural logarithm of y and subtracted this becomes natural logarithm of y minus 1 over y this will be evaluated between 1 plus e to the minus mu over kbt and infinity so let's do that we have n pi h bar square over mkbt equals natural logarithm so if i substitute uh, infinity here net, that becomes natural logarithm of infinity over infinity natural logarithm of one that is zero then i will have a minus natural logarithm of y minus one over y which will be natural logarithm of y over y minus one so natural logarithm of uh, y over y minus 1 uh, so for uh, y let's do that here uh, this will become e to the minus mu over kbt divided by 1 plus e to the minus mu over kbt and then I have a minus sign here because natural logarithm of infinity or infinity is zero. So this becomes natural logarithm 1 plus e to the minus mu over kbt over e to the minus mu over kbt. And if I divide the top with e to the minus mu over kbt i obtain natural logarithm of one plus e to the mu over kbt so this will become e to the plus mu over kbt and these terms will give me the one that i'm looking for and uh, if i continue uh, I, I can basically write n pi h bar squared over m k b t is equal to natural logarithm 1 plus e to the mu over k b t. So 
that means 1 plus e to the mu over kbt is exponential n pi h bar square over mkbt. So I take the exponential of both sides. Then this gives me exponential mu over kbt is equal to exponential n pi h bar squared over mkbt minus 1. And this gives me uh, mu is equal to kbt times natural logarithm. So I take the natural logarithm of both sides. This becomes mu over kbt. This becomes a natural logarithm of exponential n pi h bar squared over m kbt minus 1. Now I have the total number of electrons at 0 Kelvin is equal to 0 time 0 to Fermi energy density of states DE. This is at 0 Kelvin because the Fermi Dirac distribution function equals to 1 in this range at 0 Kelvin. I will find that the number of electrons is ma over pi h bar squared. That's the density of states. The integral of d epsilon gives me e Fermi. So I find that the Fermi energy is um, n divided by a, that is aerial density, n pi h bar squared divided by m. So if I substitute that for n pi h bar squared over m, I find that mu is equal to kbt times natural logarithm exponential e fermi over kbt uh, and a minus one. So this is our final answer for the chemical potential as a function of temperature. Now Let's check the high temperature limit. In the high temperature uh, limit, we would have kBT much greater than Fermi energy, which means e to the x around x equals 0 is 1 plus x. So we can substitute that here. So this gives us mu of t becoming kBT natural logarithm of 1 plus e fermi over kbt minus 1. So our x is e fermi over kbt. These ones will cancel and we will have kbt natural logarithm e fermi over kbt. In the low temperature limit, we know that mu should approach Fermi energy. E Fermi is much greater than kBT. Then exponential E Fermi over kBT becomes much greater than 1. So what happens to the chemical potential then? It will be kBT natural logarithm of exponential e fermi over kbt because we can neglect one and this will become kbt times e fermi over kbt so kbt's will cancel boltzmann constant times absolute temperature and we find that mu as t goes to zero kelvin approaches the Fermi energy as expected. So this is basically a, a result that makes perfect sense. So we have two limits, 
High temperature limit is this KBT, natural logarithm E Fermi over KBT. And uh, low temperature limit is the Fermi energy. Okay, so we're talking about temperature dependence of the chemical potential of a two-dimensional electron gas and Sommerfeld expansion. Well, here the Sommerfeld expansion gives us for the three-dimensional electron gas a result E Fermi times 1 minus pi squared over 12 KBT e over E Fermi ratio squared. Uh, and this basically it tells us that it's, it has a T squared dependence uh, for the three-dimensional electron gas. For the one-dimensional, two-dimensional electron gas, we have the total number of electrons at a finite temperature given as the integral from zero to infinity Fermi-Dirac distribution density of states dE. Now, if this is a two-dimensional electron gas, this is independent of energy, Ma over pi h bar squared, as we have shown in the previous problem. And so if we perform this integral taking ma over pi h bar squared to the left hand side in two steps uh, with x substitution and y substitution and evaluating it between the proper limits we find that the integral gives us natural logarithm of 1 plus e to the mu over kbt so we can isolate mu here and uh, for n pi h bar squared over m we see that uh, the Fermi energy is n pi h bar square over m. And uh, you can see that here, the total number of electrons at zero Kelvin is integral from zero to E Fermi density of states dE. So that Fermi energy is related to the number of electrons per area pi h bar square over m. So if we substitute this result for E Fermi here, we see that chemical potential is KBT natural logarithm exponential E Fermi over KBT minus one. Now high temperature limit, KBT is much greater than E Fermi. We have E to the x where x is small. This is approximately one plus x using Taylor's expansion. If we do that, ones cancel and we find it's KBT natural logarithm E Fermi over KBT. Low temperature limit, we see that uh, E Fermi, exponential E Fermi over KBT is much greater than one and mu boils down to E Fermi at zero Kelvin, uh, which is the expected result.